sometimes it feels like living in some fucked up trippy dream. There's things that really piss me off. But recapping, I looked at some of my older videos and I know some of them are a little cringe worthy and I talk about a lot of sensitive things, but you know, you guys are my co comment section siblings, right? It doesn't matter I'm existing. This is the Anthropocene. This is the I'm documenting the end times. So I can be whatever. So I just watched this PBS News Hour from 2015, six years ago, and back then they determined that two degrees, an arbitrary number, it was bad, and that's gonna be, that's gonna be destruction for us. It was bad. So we're gonna rewatch this video, but real quick, I want to say how things are now in 2021, and. Just the other day, I, I pulled into a Taco Bell, and I looked behind me, and I see a BMW i8, you know, the real smooth white with blue lines on it, and an Indian descent kid, like, like Indian, and his mom, and I got out of my car, and I screamed as loud as I could, like bloody murder. I said, climate change. His window was down, and he had a mask on in a BMW, and I screamed it twice as loud as I could it at the drive through window because I don't give a fuck. It's stupid now. It doesn't even, it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even make sense how, how stupid, how socially ridiculous we are. And just little things piss me off every day. Like I see some photographers, you know, they're flying all over the place and like, oh, we did a documentary over here. I'm like... I'm glad you melted a football field worth of ice. I'm glad. You know, I mean, when are people going to wake up? Look, I'm just as into adventure and travel as anybody, but you can do it with a little bit less, a little bit more conservatively. You know, you don't have to fly to off far-flung places of the world to say that you've been there. And, you know, going into a store and hearing, like, yummy, yummy, what is that song by Bieber or whatever? Like, God, just... Just hundreds of packed people in the grocery store, like, you know, I can't even afford a house. Like, all the problems I feel like I experience are as a result, mostly, of inequality that and capitalism. That separates us, it ruins my social life, my love life. The majority of my mental illness, let's call it that, is as a result of external factors that are beyond my control. That, hmm, maybe we shouldn't have given Bezos, Zuckerberg, and... Gates and hundreds of billions of dollars. What is the future of cars? Uh, hydrogen uh, or definitely electric? electric. Yeah, hydrogen you is know. a waste of time. <laughs> but uh, it's an Wissenschafts strike. Maybe we should have fucking invested that in public and social infrastructure. And, and it says it in this video, uh, energy conversion is like a 30 year project. Dude, it's totally toast. We're at 1.3 C now. Let me just repeat that. We got another point. 4.45 C loaded in from carbon emissions. We have jackasses driving Corvettes and, you know, India bringing up their economy in China. And then we have the sun, so it's another 0.5. And then, you know, the meth, it, we're going to be easily, I just say this again, we're going to be easily over two degrees by 2030, 2035. Easily. Yeah, I just feel like it bears worth mentioning because we've never gone through this shit before. I'm rational. My eyes are wide fucking open. Okay, I'll stop rambling and let's watch this video together. International climate talks continue in Paris where over 150 countries are trying to reach an agreement to limit the carbon emissions that the vast majority of scientists say drive global climate change. William Brangham helps us understand why almost more than anything, one little number matters. For several years now, the stated goal of international climate talks has been to stop the planet from warming an additional two degrees Celsius. You hear this target mentioned all the time. People just talk about two degrees. Two degrees. Two degrees. Two degrees. Two degrees. Two degrees, two degrees Celsius. But how realistic is that goal? And why is a two degrees Celsius target considered important? And let's say we fail. What does two or three or four degrees of additional warming actually mean? A bit of background. For the last 10,000 years, the Earth's temperature has been fairly steady, fluctuating by only about one degree Celsius. Yes, it's risen and fallen, but all of human existence, everything we've ever done as a species, has happened in this narrow temperature range. 
Richard Alley is a climate scientist at Penn State University. We've had 10,000 fairly warm, fairly boring years with little wiggles caused by the sun getting brighter or dimmer and wiggles caused by volcanoes exploding and blocking the sun with dust for a couple of years. At the end of this 10,000 years of sort of boredom, we are pushing very hard and we're pushing very hard in a number of ways, but the biggest of those is, is putting CO2 in the air to cause more warming. This chart shows the historical amount of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere. It too has gone up and down through time. Here's where humans came in, here's where we started burning oil and gas and coal, and here's where we are today. All that carbon sitting up in the atmosphere traps the sun's radiation and slowly drives up Earth's temperature. Now, for the first time in our history, we've pushed above our historical temperature range. The UN's Meteorological Agency says that by the end of this year, the planet will have warmed an additional one degree Celsius since the late 1800s. That's halfway to the two degree Celsius limit that global leaders in Paris are trying to avoid. Michael Oppenheimer is a climate scientist at Princeton University. We're entering a climate space now, which is entirely different than anything that's existed in the history of humanity and way out of the range that's existed for the history of civilization. Over many decades, scientists have been asked how much warming can humanity tolerate before experiencing the most destructive and dangerous effects of climate change. This is where the threshold of two degrees Celsius or about 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit came about. Scott Barrett of Columbia University served on the UN's climate panel and now studies global climate treaties. I think the two degree target was chosen more for political reasons than for true scientific reasons. So the idea was to, if, if the countries could agree on a collective target, that that would mobilize the action needed to uh, get the whole world to act together. While there's some uncertainty about how much of a problem two degrees of additional warming will be and how we'll be able to adapt to it, scientists say we'll likely see longer droughts and more intense heat waves, which could cause big disruptions to the world's food supply. At two degrees, sea levels could rise several feet, which would flood many coastal communities in the U.S. and potentially cause large migrations of people from countries like Bangladesh and India and Vietnam. And according to the most recent data, 2015 is now going to be the hottest year on record. If we don't start with rapid emissions reductions and substantial emissions reductions, that will pass a danger point beyond which the consequences for many people and countries on Earth will simply become unacceptable and eventually disastrous. This issue has attracted more diplomatic attention than any issue in human history. And what we've seen for 25 years is all these little tweaks, these modifications that have been tried, they don't change the fundamental result. Global emissions keep rising and they're going in the wrong direction. Last year, NASA released this animation showing a year's worth of global carbon emissions compressed into a few minutes. And you can see the three main culprits right there, the US, Europe, and the new top emitter, China. In advance of these Paris talks, many of the world's biggest emitters, including the top three, have made voluntary pledges to cut back their emissions. They're considered the most ambitious targets ever pledged, but will they be enough to stay below two degrees? To answer that, a group of researchers created what's called a carbon budget. It's an estimate of how much carbon energy we can continue to burn while still staying under the two degree threshold. And as you can see, fairly soon, a matter of decades, global carbon emissions will have to drastically go down to keep the warming in check. But there's another problem. Just taking those pledges made by the US, the EU, and China alone, by 2030, those three will account for nearly all the budgeted emissions, leaving barely anything for the remaining five billion people on Earth. That includes entire continents like Africa and South America. It includes the subcontinent of India, which will inevitably emit more and more carbon as its 1.3 billion people buy more cars and ship more goods as its economy grows. This is the challenge facing policymakers in Paris. How does the world accommodate billions of people, people with growing energy needs that scientists say the planet simply can't tolerate? Most scientists see climate change as the biggest, most complicated, long-term challenge the world has faced. But for some, there's optimism. We're not going to stabilize the composition of the atmosphere today. There are a lot of people who drove to work this morning who are going to drive home this evening. Uh, changing the, the energy system is a 30-year task or longer. You could 
look at this and say, wow, we're in trouble. You also could look at this and say, a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. And by starting on the path that will get there, we will generate the knowledge, we will generate the, the technologies and, and the will to do more. Like President Obama, before he left Paris yesterday, echoed this optimism. I think we're going to solve it. I think the issue is just going to be the pace and how much damage is done before uh, we are able to fully apply the brakes. Others are dubious. They argue that the Paris talks, which are based on voluntary pledges, simply won't demand enough to keep the planet below the two degree threshold. It's somewhat, I think, deceptive to think that this is a success. There's no enforcement mechanism at all in this agreement. It's easy to agree to something when you announce the pledge yourself and when you know you're not really going to be held accountable as to whether you meet the pledge or not. Most scientists believe that even if every country followed through 100% on their voluntary pledges, there's already enough CO2 in the atmosphere to warm the planet by two degrees. Scientists and world leaders in Paris hope that even if this threshold is breached, nations will not just follow through on their pledges, but will agree to dial back emissions even more in the future. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm William Brangham in Washington, D.C. What a load of bullshit. Six years later, nothing has changed. In fact, we've increased emissions. We're on a suicidal mission. He says, uh, 30 years to change out the energy infrastructure? Are you fucking kidding me? It's a joke. Functionally extinct. What a trip, man. What a trippy experience. Okay, thanks for all the new subscribers. Talk to you later.